and welcome to Florida Hospital North Pinellas Mandatory Customer Service Class. This class is required by our clinical partner and must be completed by all faculty and students who attend clinicals at Florida Hospitals North Pinellas, also known as FHNP. With this class, each participant will be responsible to download, print, complete, and turn in a total of six documents. These documents include three patient scenarios, one on communication, one on respect, and one on teamwork. Fourth item is a pledge. Um, it is titled, A Promise to FHNP Patients. The fifth item is a final exam. And the last item, or the sixth item, is a class evaluation. If you look at your screen, print, complete, sign, and turn in. So later, when we reference where to print and um, print files from, it is in that top right-hand corner. On the bottom right-hand corner is a box that is marked Notes. And in that box, you will find um, some information that corresponds to certain slides. Some slides do have some questions that I will ask you if you, for some reason, would like to read the questions, maybe have um, a little better thought process behind the individual answers, or if for some reason you can't hear me or don't quite understand what I'm saying, again, there are some notations on some of the slides on the bottom right-hand corner under Notes. We're going to start out this class with a very powerful video.
Now we should be back from that very powerful video. Now let's take a look at your screen and how to navigate some issues on, or some areas on this screen. Um, the in-service or, or the presentation itself is on the center screen. To the top right-hand corner, you will find the files from the presentation. And from there, you will be able to download, print, and complete the needed forms. On the bottom right of your screen is the notes category. Let's start off with a quote from Gandhi. And this quote was actually found by the Florida Hospital North Pinellas CNO. Um, and she found this quote while she was on vacation in India at the Taj Mahal. A customer is the most important visitor on our premises. He is not dependent on us. We are dependent on him. He is not an interruption in our work. He is the purpose of it. He is not an outsider in our business. He is part of it. We are not doing him a favor by serving him. He is doing us a favor by giving us an opportunity to do so. Now let's talk about the mission of Florida Hospital North Pinellas. Florida Hospital North Pinellas is part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And they believe, or one of their beliefs is, that we, extend, we all extend the healing ministry of Christ to our patients in our own way. What makes Florida Hospital North Pinellas different? As a faith-based organization, we focus on extending the healing ministry of Christ. True healing involves the mind, body, and spirit. In a hospital community of care, we extend our healing as Christ would have done in an environment of compassion and support. Our values. We strive to meet or exceed both the service standards of the healthcare industry and the expectations of our patients we serve and measure our success through continuous surveying of patient satisfaction. Let's talk about branding. We've all been to a Starbucks before. When you go into a Starbucks, you aren't buying a no, you aren't just buying a $10 cup of coffee. You're buying the whole Starbucks experience. Same happens when we talk about for a hospital in North Pinellas. People choose their hospital for the experience now. Each person represents a human contact, an opportunity to satisfy a human need. Those needs are ongoing and fundamental to our business. Patient experience. Patient experience is treating the patient as you would the person whom you love most. You might notice that that doesn't say as you wish to treat it, but it says the person whom you love most. It's culture, not strategy. Culture eats strategy for lunch every day of the week. Culture is the predominating attitudes and beliefs that characterize the function of a group. Creating an exceptional patient experience is a part of our culture, not just a corporate program. Preceptors are charged with assuring students embody the culture, and it all starts with you. Another wonderful quote from Gandhi, we must become the change we seek in the world. The foundation of patient experience. And this incorporates desire, empathy, compassion, and skill. Put them all together, and you get the culture. We talk about creating a culture. Let's give you a question. In regard to providing an exceptional patient experience, culture represents which one of the following? A. The attitudes and behaviors that characterize the function of a group. B. Appreciation for the arts. C. The food the patient will like to eat. Or D. A place where bacteria grows. And the answer is A. The attitudes and behaviors that characterize the function of a group.
desire. To selflessly serve others. To keep going even though you're tired. To exhibit patience. To strive for excellence in everything you do. And when we're again talking about the foundations of patient experience, developing a culture that exemplifies the patient's experience requires desire, empathy, compassion, and A, a good personality, B, skill, C, the will to succeed, or D, a friendly smile? The answer is skill. Empathy. What is the definition of empathy? If we're going to give you a question on empathy, let's see if we can throw that question out before we give you the definition. Which one is correct? Listening with empathy can best be described as listening with the intent to A. Understand the feelings behind what the other person is saying. B. Formulate your response as quickly as possible. C. Get to the point. Or D. Get the other person to think you are listening to them. Now let's give you the definition. And remember, listening is very hard work. Empathy is the power of understanding another's situation, feelings, and motives. It's seeking first to understand, then to be understood. And it's acknowledging the four dimensions of our lives, body, mind, heart, and spirit. So back to the question. The correct answer would be A, understanding the feelings behind what the other person is saying. Integration of the four dimensions. And I have another question for you. And the question is, which is correct? Understanding the four dimensions of our patient's life, which are body, mind, heart, and spirit, is critical to providing exceptional care because A, we can anticipate what they want for dinner. B, we can formulate a deeper understanding of our patient and how to best meet their needs. C, it is a quick approach to understanding what they want. Or D, it is recommended by this program. And the answer there would be D. We can formulate a deeper understanding of our patients and how to best meet their needs. The definition of body is the patient's current physical condition as well as the patient's response to treatments. Mind, patient's understanding of his or her condition as well as the patient's cognitive ability. Heart, patient's current emotional state as well as the patient's family and support structure. Spirit, the patient's desire to live as well as the patient's belief system. Compassion. It's communicating to others that you care through your attitudes, behaviors, and words. It's devoid of any bias or judgment. It's at the heart of what we do as healthcare professionals. And a wonderful quote by Mother Teresa, Let us always meet each other with a smile, for the smile is the beginning of love. Skill. I have another question for you on skill. Skill. Developing a practice of constantly improving your skills promotes A. Confidence in regard to your interactions with patients. B. Effectiveness rather than efficiency. C. Your patients trust in your capabilities. D. An exceptional patient experience. Or E. All of the above. We return to the slide. Skill encompasses all that you do, requires constant and never-ending improvement, allows you to confidently execute the plan of care, ensures effectiveness, not efficiency. So with those said, go back to your question. 
And the answer would be E, the above. Let's go back to that picture a moment. You see this lovely little lady, or this lovely nurse, and it kind of zeroes in on her, and she's doing everything correctly. She's looking at her insulin vial. She's drawing, it looks like insulin. She's drawing up the medication. But what's going on in the background? What does the patient see? Does the patient see her? Does he see that she's doing everything right? Or does he just see a giant needle? So you wonder, what is that patient thinking right now? The Florida Hospital North Pinellas patient experience, and what does that incorporate? Here are some subheadings in which we consider the patient experience, and that would be setting patient expectations, meeting patient needs, as well as exceeding patient needs. Setting our patient's expectations, greeting and welcome, or their first impression. Recognize that customers include patients, physicians, visitors, volunteers, and coworkers. Acknowledge them right away. Always smile. Always make eye contact. Always welcome them to our facility. Avoid any personal conversations while guests and patients are present. Always introduce yourself. Always explain your purpose and role. Always have your ID badge on. And listen carefully. Don't interrupt. And let me branch off from this in a second and talk about greetings and welcomes. As a student, let's say that you are brand new to Florida Hospital North Pinellas and that it's your very first day at the hospital. And a guest or a client comes up to you and asks you where radiology or perhaps the lab or some department in the hospital. You're not familiar with the hospital. You get turned around. You have no idea where the radiology lab or whatever they asked you is located. What should you do? Should you tell them that you're a student, you're sorry you don't know, it's your first day, and move on? Um, do you apologize again and just say that you're sorry and to go to the nearest nurse's station and maybe they can help you? Both of those would be incorrect. What you need to do is physically take the person down to the information desk there, have a volunteer or an employee take them to where they need to be. Or you can take them to the nearest hospital, hospital employee that can help them. You do not leave them in the hall. You do not tell them that you, don't, you cannot help them. Proactive greeting. Make eye contact, smile, and greet everyone you encounter within a six-foot radius. Take the initiative to greet coworkers, family members, visitors, and patients. It takes months to find a customer and only seconds to lose one. Meeting our patients' expectations. Always follow through on any request they may have. Never leave a patient while they are waiting for their family members to arrive or have requested assistance. Do everything in your power to meet the requests. Maintain a quiet, clean, safe, and secure environment. If you can help solve a patient problem or concern, do it fast. If you can't get the right person, then you need to get someone who can. With this said, let's remember that one of Rasmussen's policies on clinicals is what we call a no-pass zone, or um, when, there a call, when a call light goes off, you may not pass it. You must stop, you must go into the room, and you must assist the patient. If you cannot assist the patient with whatever they need, then you need to explain to that patient that you will find somebody that will. Then you need to leave the room, go find somebody that can help the patient, and make sure, last step, make sure that that does happen. You need to go back into the room later and make sure that what the patient needed was done. If you do not see whomever you have to go in, go in. So, not only do you need to answer the call light, you need to assist the patient, find somebody, or find somebody who can assist the patient, and lastly, follow up and make sure that it was completed if you did not do it yourself. If for some reason you ask someone to assist the patient and it's going to take some time, you additionally need to go back into the room and explain to the patient what the delay is. Golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or at Florida Hospital, remember that you must 
keep in mind not only do unto others as you would have them do unto you, do unto others as you wish to have your most precious loved one treated. Exceeding our patients' expectations, go the extra mile. Anticipate their needs and wants. Offer to do anything extra you can for them. Remember, it's all about the little things, especially in nursing. When we talk about nursing, um, an appropriate skill level is expected by the patient. Correct medications is, an ex is expected by the patient. Competency and care is something that the patient expects. How you make them feel is what they remember. So all the little things that you do to make them feel special or make them feel cared for is actually what they remember. How well you um, perform a skill, how it, you know that you gave them the correct medications, those are all expected natures of the patient. To more than they expect, build relationships with our patients. Does customer satisfaction equal customer loyalty? Think about that. If you are a satisfied customer, let's say you went to a restaurant and you went to your local steakhouse. If you go to your local steakhouse and your dinner was appropriate, your steak was good, the service was appropriate or timely, um, everything about the meal was, was fairly enjoyable. Does that make you loyal to that restaurant? What if restaurant B opens up and it has, um, maybe it's a little cheaper for the same steak. Maybe the ambiance is a little nicer. Maybe it's on the beach and you can look out the window and watch the sunset or perhaps they have live music. Would you still be loyal to, loyal to customer A or to restaurant A or would you go over to restaurant B? So back to my question. Does customer service equal customer loyalty? And the answer is no. We need our patients to be more than just satisfied. If we don't do something special, people won't remember us. If, we don't, if they don't remember us, why would they ever come back? Tips for internal customer service. Encourage your coworkers in their efforts. Express praise for a job well done. Ask others ideas. Offer thoughtful suggestions. Stay positive. Listen respectfully to what others say. Keep lines of communication open. And teamwork. Never forget teamwork. We're going to talk about HCAPS. And HCAPS is a, is a way of measuring customer service in, in hospitals or healthcare facilities. And the H stands for hospital. Z stands for consumer, A stands for assessment of, H stands for healthcare, P stands for providers, and F stands for systems. And HCAPS is a tool to be used for public record of major areas of hospital performance to support consumer choice. Who is eligible to fill out an HCAP survey? And that would be all pair types, 18 years or older, they must stay at least one night in the hospital, they cannot have a psychiatric diagnosis, and they must be at live at, or alive at the time of discharge, um, whether that be to uh, an extended stay facility or discharge to home. And remember, students have the ability to affect HCAP scores. If a student creates um, some animosity with a client or guest, the HCAP score is going to go down. If the, if the student goes above and beyond and makes that patient's stay uh, memorable and exciting and a good one, then the HCAP survey um, is going to go up. So let's talk about the survey format itself. And HCAP survey consists of 27 questions. Of those 27 questions, 16 evalu are evaluative questions. Five questions are about you or about the patient. Uh, two are global rating questions, and four are screening questions. And let's give you an example of each one. An evaluative question um, example would be about care from the nurses. Um, a question about the self would be, what language do you mainly speak at home? A global rating question could be, what you recommend the, would you recommend this hospital to your friends and family? 
and a screening question would be, your experience in the hospital and during the hospital stay, did you need help from the nurse or other hospital staff in getting to the bathroom or in using a bedpan? Some differences in scoring methodology and Press Ganey, which is what we used to use, and um, now we're going to HCAPS, but in Press Ganey scoring, the likelihood to recommend is the mean score or, or is the mean score where very good is 100%, good is 75%, fair would equal 50%, poor would equal 25%, and very poor would equal zero. But now if you go to the HCAP scoring, the station, um, if you look at the top box, definitely is yes. And you get 100 for definitely. But for anything below definitely or the top answer, you're scored to zero. The important messages, percent top box, percentage of patient responses in the highest category possible. This is how HCAP scores are reported. So again, it has to be in the very highest category possible. On the press gaining survey, it is a percentage of very good responses. All other responses, again, get a zero. Mean score, the average of all patient responses to a particular question, section, or at overall facility level. And the percentile rank is the proportion of scores in the database that are, are at or below your facility's score. The HCAP has 10 categories that we utilize, and those are patient responses are put on, into the following 10 categories. Number one being nurse communication, number two being doctor communication, three staff responsiveness, four pain management, five communication about medication, Six, discharge information. Seven, cleanliness. Eight, quietness. Nine, overall satisfaction. And ten, willingness to recommend. Now let's take a look. We've got those ten headings on the outside in the square blue boxes. And then you see a bullseye effect. We need to be in the green 95th to 100 percentile. Now if you look to the top right hand corner, it'll give you a key. And the, the, what looks like an arrow is dated April to June of 2012. And what looks like a circle is dated April to June 2013. And as you can see, the difference between um, 2012 and 2013, all of the scores pretty much went up. We are not into the green yet. But we do have um, some approaching the yellow. And they did go up. Let's change the time frame there. And now we're at March through April of 2013, and then May to June of 2013. And as we see, those scores again continue to go up. We have three in the yellow now, when we only had one just on the yellow prior. And again, we want to see those go all the way into the green or the 95th to 100 percentile. Let's talk about hourly rounding. Hourly rounding is something that is a requirement at Florida Hospital North Pinellas. Um, it is initiated to improve our patient satisfaction, and it is visual cues for patients and staff in patient rooms. So some of the things that you will see on hourly rounding, number one, um, it shows the patient that you're checking on them, monitors their comfort and pain, uh, helps you move and change positions of the patient, assist with uh, trips to the bathroom, and evaluate the room in um, cleanliness and tidiness. Now, as far as the health care giver, what you need to make ensure every time you go into a room is the telephone working and is in reach, um, is the bedside table in reach, uh, are the personal items in reach, uh, does the patient have water or a beverage if they're allowed, is the call light for assistant in reach, uh, as well as urinal, bedside commode, bedpan, or wait for elimination within reach. Let's add to that uh, things that I would like to see you check in hourly rounding. Does the patient have their proper ID and safety wristbands on? Uh, is the bed in low position? Is it locked? Is the room clear of clutter? Here is the actual rounding sheet that is posted in each patient's room, and that students should absolutely and need to document on round hourly. 
Um, you can see the categories there from the registered nurse or the certified nursing assistant. But as a student, you need to be filling out the registered nurse. You can put SN or student nurse behind um, what you check. But please, do fill these out hourly on your patients. Always address the four P's. And the four P's include pain. You must evaluate pain level. Position. Help the patient, can, um, patient in their position not only to get comfortable, but also to prevent pressure ulcers. Potty. Offer help using the toilet. Periphery. All personal items need to be in reach. Hierarchy of patient needs. Similar to Maslow's, but change slightly for age caps. We have bed, nutrition, rest, cleanliness, temperature control, and pain control on the bottom. Proper ID, right procedure, right meds, reassurance, fears and concerns, and explanations. Second level up. Next level, we have response to call lights, visiting hours, family needs, and listen. Followed by individualized care, respect, and courtesy. And at the peak of the triangle, we have the exceptional experience. Patient experience, impact, um, the impact of rounding. And let's look at these scores. When we talk about nurse leader rounding on a patient, the question asked was, did the nurse leader visit you during your stay? And the latest survey that we have on file from Florida Hospital North Pinellas shows the error there, and they received a 93 percentile. The target is 90 percent or higher, and they did make target, and they got 93 percent on the question, did a nurse leader visit you during your stay? Let's go to the next slide, and it is on hourly rounding. And did a staff member visit you hourly during the day? Target would be 90%. We fell just slightly short, and that was at 81%. So students can absolutely help to raise this score. Being proactive rather than reactive means to control a situation rather than letting it control you. Communication tools. Let's talk about SBAR. And SBAR was actually invented by NASA after one of the shuttles exploded. And they invented it as a means to go back and look at communication. And they went back and looked at the shuttle and, and the terrible, terrible tragedy that happened and wanted to know how, if they improved communication, could they stop that from ever happening again. SBAR was created. And now we use it in healthcare. It is a standard approach to hand off communications among caregivers. SBAR is the Florida Hospital North Pinellas model for improving communication between clinicians. It is used to support open, honest communication for sharing information, asking questions, and providing suggestions. So let's talk about what the individual components of SBAR are. The S is situation. The B is background. The A is assessment. And the R is recommendation. So with situation, what is the situation that you are calling about? B, provide the information related to the situation. A, what is your assessment of the situation? And R, what do you really want? Communication. So let's use an example of your nurse. And you have a patient that has a potassium level of 3 that is going to surgery later on, either the next morning or later that day. And with a potassium level of 3, what should you do? You should call the physician. So you call the physician. What situation would you need? Well, you need to make sure that you know the situation is that the potassium is 3.0, as well as that the patient's going to surgery. Background. What are some background information that you might need to provide for that physician? Well, you might say, what surgery are they going to have? Maybe any past medical history? Um, are there any other important labs that you need to speak to him about? Uh, what was you know, does the patient have an NG tube? Does the patient have diarrhea? Is there a reason that the potassium became low? Uh, that, because that reason may need to be corrected as well. Then we go into assessment. What assessment are you going to need to provide with this? Well, you might need to provide vital signs. Um, is the surgery for sure? Is that the consent done? Is PACU notified? Are there orders um, for surgery itself? 
as well as recommendations. What do you want to obtain out of this? Uh, you may wish to just ask the physician straight out um, if you can have a specific order. For example, with the potassium 3.0, I would ask the physician if I could have an order that gives me the ability to use the potassium protocol. And even though we call it a protocol, it's not an order until it's ordered. But that protocol will give us parameters in which we can continue to monitor and correct potassium until it is at the limit we wish it to be. Risk management. Let's talk about risk management. Um, the, risk, the goal of risk management is to protect our patients from foreseeable harm, minimize potential exposures to lawsuits, complaints, and regulatory agencies. And when I think of risk management, one of the prime risk management issues that I see now is pressure ulcers. So let's talk about pressure ulcers. Um, things that we have to do to not only minimize the number of pressure ulcers, but to minimize those lawsuits, complaints, and regulatory agencies. Things that every nurse should do and as a student you should do to minimize risk. Uh, as far as a pressure ulcer, when a patient comes into the hospital, you, it is protocol that if the patient comes in with a pressure ulcer, pictures need to be taken of that pressure ulcer, as well as a full description needs to be documented of that pressure ulcer. And the reason being is when a patient develops a pressure ulcer in a facility, the cost or the average cost to cure or heal a single pressure ulcer is $40,000. $40,000 is basically a nursing salary for an entire year. So if you look at it this way, for every pressure ulcer in a facility, that's one less nurse. That's a huge number. So with that said, think about reimbursements. Remember that when a patient obtains a pressure ulcer in a facility, that $40,000 cost cannot and will not be reimbursed to the facility. So, things that we need to do, again, document if they come in with a pressure ulcer, because if it's not documented, we own that pressure ulcer. And other things that need to be done, uh, make sure that the patient is turned every hour to two hours. Make sure that um, bony prominences like elbows and the sacrum and heels are floated or propped on pillows, uh, that they have appropriate dressings, and that non-sheer material and non-sheer chucks are placed under them. Uh, maybe a brief needs to be removed because it's causing some shear. So all of these things are things that you can do personally to minimize potential exposure to lawsuits, complaints, regulatory agencies, as well as prevent uh, reimbursement loss. If there were an issue, what would you do about it? How would you report this? First off, you would remember when about pain management, assessment, and reassessment, you must document pain on your MAR with any pain medication. First off, when you go to give the medication and you open up your MAR, a sub-window or a box will pop open that you must fill out about the pain. It includes not only the pa what the patient states their pain is, what you'd like their goal to be. It includes things like um, are they awake and alert, what their respiratory rate is, as well as all those duration, what makes it better, make, what makes it worse, what interventions, things like that. But in addition to when you initially give the medication, you must also return to the patient, check the pain goal, and document a response to that pain medication. If it is an IV medication, you must document this response within 15 minutes. If it is an IM medication, you need to document the response within 30 minutes. And if it's a PO medication, you need to document the response within one hour. Next, we'll go to our three scenarios. Remember that box at the top right-hand corner? We're going to visit that. And what you need to do is find the three scenarios. One is on communication. 
One is on respect, and one is on teamwork. You need to click on the file for each of the three scenarios. You need to download those files. Once you've downloaded those files, you need to print the file from the download, complete the assignment, and turn in a copy of all three scenarios with your name on them to your clinical instructor or instructor, Ms. Susan Greider. Next, we have a promise to our patients. And that file is also located in the top right-hand corner under the box that's headed Files for Presentations. And you need to click on the file that they promised to our patients. You need to download the file, print the file, put your name on the file, sign the file, and or sign that copy, and turn that copy into your clinical instructor or Ms. Susan Greider. Here's what that a promise to our patient looks like, and let's read through it. I am Florida Hospital North Pinellas. I am who patients and visitors see when they come here. Mine are the eyes they look into when they are worried or lonely. Mine is the voice they hear when they ride the elevator, when they try to sleep, and when they try to, pr to process complicated, sometimes devastating information. Mine is the face that they connect with when they are lying on a stretcher or bed and need a kind human touch. I am who they meet on the way to the appointments that could affect their destinies. Mine is the voice that educates, congratulates, and comforts. Loud, so it's not. Is the hospital. If I am rude, so the hospital. If the care and service I provide are brilliant, so is Florida Hospital North Pinellas. Visitors and patients remember what they see, hear, and feel. They will know that I am compassionate and dedicated to safe, exceptional care and to exceeding their expectations when they personally experience my commitment. Patients are counting on my skills and care. I am privileged to be present here, sometimes in the first moment of life and sometimes in the last. I am responsible for my attitude and actions. I have a personal stake in the collective attitudes and actions of everyone who work at Florida Hospital North Pinellas. My performance helps to define all of us. Again, you need to sign this, and you need to turn it in to your clinical instructor or Susan Greider, nursing instructor. The next thing on our um, assignments is the final exam. Again, go to that box in the top right-hand corner. Find the final exam file. You need to download the file. From that download on your computer, you will need to print the file. You need to complete the test, and you will need to turn in a copy of the exam, please have your name on it, to your clinical instructor or instructor Susan Greider. Remember that you must pass this exam to continue or pass clinical at Florida Hospital North Pinellas. Last, please click on the file for customer service evaluation, then download that document, print it, complete it, um, put your name on it, and turn it in with the other five documents to your clinical instructor or instructor Susan Greider. So a total of six items are there, which include three scenarios, the pledge that is a promise to our patients, the final exam, and the evaluation. Thank you so much for your completion of this class. And as a wrap-up and an end, let's leave you with this note. Thank <laughs> you.